Hey, what's up everybody? This is Jerry. Welcome to our video tutorial series on Adaptive Layout. In this series, we'll cover the fundamentals of creating flexible interfaces that can handle multiple screen sizes and orientations, and be better prepared to handle future changes. Sound useful? Let's get started. Back in the beginning, we just had iPhones. The user could rotate their device, but every screen size was 320 by 480 or 480 by 320. Then the iPad came out, and then the iPhone 5 had a taller screen, and then the iPhone 6 had a taller and wider screen, and the 6 Plus had an even taller and wider screen, and the iPad Pro will have a completely new screen size again. And now the iPad allows two apps to share the screen. So even if you know what device your app is running on, it could be running on one third, one half, or two thirds of the screen size. And who knows what the screen sizes will be for future devices. Even if you're only targeting a single device, there are still things like the double height status bar when, when you're in a phone call or tethering that can affect your layout. When there was one or two screen sizes to handle, it was pretty common to define views with explicit X and Y positions and width and height, maybe with code to change the hard-coded values for landscape. Well, this technique breaks down pretty quickly now that we have so many different layouts to support. We need a solution that will give us flexibility to handle all these solutions and more. Auto layout goes hand in hand with adaptive layout. But auto layout alone doesn't solve the whole problem. If you've tried using only constraints to handle portrait and landscape orientations on one iPhone screen size alone, you've seen how difficult that can be. The constraints can get complex pretty quickly, and you're almost certainly going to have to write some code to tweak the layout once you add iPad into the mix. Auto layout is very useful and serves as the foundation for adaptive layout. If you aren't familiar with the concepts, take a break here and watch our auto layout video tutorial series first. While you're taking a break, you might want to watch our phenomenal series on stack views. Stack views make working with auto layout much simpler, and we'll use them in the tutorials in this series. Before adaptive layout, the recommended setup for a universal app was to have two sets of storyboards, one for iPhone and a different one for iPad. The same view controller classes could be hooked up to each storyboard, but if you needed to make a storyboard change, you usually had to duplicate that change in both storyboards. Now, things are much simpler, and you can work from one set of storyboards that can handle devices from an iPhone 4 to a 6 Plus and all the way up to an iPad. There are a ton of new features in Xcode and the SDK to make supporting multiple screen sizes much easier. We'll begin in the first part of the series by looking at size classes and interface builder. Size classes group together different screen sizes by attribute. For example, iPhones in portrait are considered to have a compact width, while the iPad, in addition to the 6 Plus and landscape, are considered to have regular width. By designing your layouts for these attributes rather than for particular devices, you'll have the flexibility to handle all the current devices. But you'll also be set up for future hardware changes, like the iPad Pro, and software changes, like the status bar being automatically hidden in landscape. In the next part of the series, we'll look at some of the code underpinnings of adaptive layout, trait collections, and trait environments. You'll learn how to query the environment to get information on the current size class. You'll also look at the class behind adaptive image collection and how to dynamically add images to a collection that you might not have at design time, because you've downloaded them from the network, for example. Then we'll look at more targeted applications of adaptive layout. There's the appearance proxy, which you may have used before to do things like customize the look of the navigation bar across your entire app. Appearance proxies now support trait collections, so you'll see how these two technologies work together. We'll also look at adaptive presentation where you can control how each of your view controllers is presented at runtime. For example, you might want to show some extra information. In a compact size, you'll want to show that in a full screen modal, but on a regular size device, you might want to show that in a popover. That's it for this introduction to the Adaptive Layout video tutorial series. And as always, we'd like to leave you with a challenge. Your challenge for this introductory video is to keep watching and to take a look at the challenge for each tutorial. It will really help to put the concepts into practice and take your adaptive layout skills to the next level. And you might even learn something new. 
I hope you enjoyed this introduction and that you enjoyed this series. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.